it may take more time for a new principal to to be, to be effective. Uh, so the first year you are just uh, arriving to the place, landing to the place, and it takes m much more time to 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 become to be, to make uh, new things, and this to to become uh, effectively uh, real in the students' achievement. I think that's that's exactly right. So. So one of the difficulties, right, is when your first year as a principal, your staff, all of your teachers, none of them were determined by you. You arrive at the school in August. You inherit all the teachers that were chosen by the previous principal. You inherit the mathematics curriculum. I mean, in, in the U.S., the school district tends to, to have a big influence over the mathematics curriculum. But you influence the way teaching is structured in the school. You kind of inherit all of that. So you might not think in the first year that you, you can have much of an effect. So what we do in the paper is we also do the same thing by dropping, but dropping the first year. So now we need an extra year of data. So we compare the second and third year when you have the same principal, and we compare the principal's second year with the previous principal's final year. Now, as I pointed out earlier, there's also this worry that in the final year, the principal's not really doing the job that he or she was doing previously because, they're, you know, it's sort of like a horse going out to pasture, right? They, they smell the, the grass and they, uh, they're ready to quit about January. And not only that, all the teachers in the school and all the other workers know that this person's not going to be around. I don't really have to behave. It's not going to have any implications for me. So in the future, what we're going to do is again drop the final year of the previous principal's tenure at the school and compare the second year of the new principal to the penultimate or, or next to the last year of the old principal. We haven't done that yet. And, and in this particular data set, we only have six years of data, so it's a little bit limiting. We are transitioning to a new data set that has 18 years of data, so it's going to make this much more feasible to, to stretch out these periods into different comparisons. And it, in a sense, that's what the, the revision of this paper is going to be, is to much more carefully look at the patterns of changes and variation over time, depending upon how long someone's been a principal. Okay. So we've really talked about all of these, these issues, and I'll skip all of the, the, um, the algebra. But essentially what we do is we run a regression. And the dependent variables, the square difference in scores between, in, in student average gains between two years. So again, the dependent variable is the gains that the students had this year minus the average gain the students had last year squared. Because we don't care about the direction, we just care about the absolute difference. And we essentially regress that on an indicator for whether this, this comparison is comparing how well the school did under two different principles, as opposed to comparing how the school did during the spell of a principle. And it's the coefficient on that indicator which is what drives us, where, where we get our estimate of the variance of principal quality, and essentially you have to divide that coefficient by two. And there's some assumptions, and basically you think about this as during this short time period, the schools are hiring their principals from the same distribution. And there's a lot of uncertainty about how good somebody's going to be, but you're selecting someone on the basis of your expectations. And what, what's also important here is that means that if some schools always get good principals and other schools always get not so good principals, we're ignoring those differences among schools. We're only capturing the within school differences in principal quality. So it's kind of a lower bound estimate. So the idea is, and I'll go back to this slide, the idea is that any variation or any fluctuation within a principal spell can't be caused by the principal. Now, of course, I've been telling you the story about how it could be because in someone's last year, maybe they don't behave the same way they did earlier. Or Ismail made the point that in your early years in the school, you may be learning more about the school and learning how to do a better job and having greater influence. 
So in fact, this assumption is likely to be violated, but it's violated in a way that, that again leads to a lower bound. Because we're assuming that what happens within the time of principals at a school kind of provides an estimate of the year-to-year -year fluctuations that are not due to the principal. And only the difference between those and what happens around transitions we attribute to contributions of principals. So if some of what happens within a principal spell is actually caused by the principal doing differently, the same principal actually being differentially effective, then that should really be added on to our estimate of the variation. So, and we use, as I said, non-adjacent years in some specifications, and in some specifications we add the fluctuation in, in our observed student characteristics to see how sensitive the estimates are. So these are things like the, the percentage of kids who are poor, the percentage of kids that are black or Hispanic, um, the percentage of kids who moved recently to the school. And these are all things that are predictive of achievement, but if we find that when you add them, you don't change the results very much, it gives you some confidence that even other things that you don't measure probably don't change the results that much either. It's kind of an informal specification check. And here's the results for the entire sample. And the first two columns uh, are for the adjacent year, so the years directly around the transition. And now you're getting estimates of the standard deviation of about half of what it was in the other one, so about 0.05 is a standard deviation in principal quality. So this, this one says if you move from the median principal uh, past a third of the principals, test scores are going to go up by 0.05 of a standard deviation. And this, you know, this looks like a much smaller number. Um, but I think, and historically people would have dismissed this as unimportant, but imagine if, if you take a school and you get a one standard deviation better principal and the children are in the school for 12 years. And let's say further that about half of the contribution of the school lasts over time. So there's, you know, there's a lot of evidence that if you raise achievement by 0.1 standard deviation, after the next year you lose half of it, that it, that it deteriorates over time. But I think the idea that about half of it persists is, is about what the literature is at. So if you take 0.025 of a standard deviation times 12 years, you get an improvement of 0.3, I think. Is that right? I think that's right, right? 0.3 of a standard deviation in, in these data in Texas, the average difference in seventh grade between kids who are poor and kids who aren't poor is about 0.7 of a standard deviation. So by getting a much better principle, you can eliminate almost half of the differential between the poor and the non-poor students as they're progressing through school, which would be a huge effect. Now the unfortunate reality is that it's probably the poor kids who have the worst principles as they're progressing through school. And it's very difficult to come up with a system that would be politically acceptable that you would redirect the, the higher quality principles into those schools. But I think what, what this number, which looks very small, 0.05, actually is educationally and economically quite meaningful. There's, I don't know if you've seen it, there's a very interesting study by Jonah Rockoff who came, right? Did he present his work with Raj Chetty linking, print, li, li, linking teacher quality to the future wages, right? So many of you are familiar with that paper, and Jonah was a student of mine uh, when he was an undergraduate. And you can think of the same thing for principals. So if a principal is able to get into a school, and remember this 0.05 is not only for kids in one classroom, this is for the entire school. So this is something which can have a huge effect uh, on many children. So even though it looks small, I think it's often you know, a challenge to convince that even though these numbers seem quite small, that because of the cumulative nature of learning, these can have a very large effect on important long-run outcomes like educational attainment and, and earnings. And the interesting thing is when we go one year in, so we skip the first year, we look at the second year, the estimates of the variance go up by about more than 10%, right? About 12, 15%, which is consistent with Ismail's comment that the principal should have a larger effect in the second year than in the first year and also consistent with the view that it's not 
turbulence around a principal transition that's causing these fluctuations. Yes? But uh, in order to get this uh, point 0.3 uh, impact uh, of the, the standard deviation through uh, 12 years, you would, you would need to be changing the, the, the principal each year because the, this 0.05 you, you, go, you get is uh, when there is a change in the principal. Well, remember, we're, we're just using the change in the principle to provide an estimate of the variance in principal quality. So, as long as you were, you were able to put a principal in a school, let's say you took a school that had a poor principal, say a principal in the bottom, say the 17th percentile of the quality distribution in a difficult school, and you were able to replace that principal with a dynamic person who was in the, just the median principal that one standard deviation increase, if that person would remain in that school for all those years, those kids by the 12th grade on average would do 0.3 standard deviation better than they would have done had they been in that school with the older principal um, for all those years. Now, looking by poverty quartile, we get the exact same pattern. And that is that the lowest poverty schools, you get the smallest estimate of the effects of principles. And this idea is that, you know, these schools are sort of well, running pretty well by themselves. And whereas in the highest poverty schools, you get a, even larger effects. <laughs>